Now by request, I'm going to do a very, very basic crash course in um, animating a character using a fairly standard rig. So to start off with, I'm going to delete my default cube, and the first thing we're going to deal with is actually bringing the character into your scene. So you don't ever want to be animating with a character that's just... you don't ever want to use your character file for animating um, a scene. So we're actually going to link a character in. That way, you know, in a proper production pipeline, if um, a character rigger or a modeler were to make an essential change to a model that had already been that we'd already started animating and using in scenes, um, our file would automatically update. So to start off with, we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Link. Then I'm going to browse, and I'm going to use the Rain character that's part of the Blender Cloud. So I'll browse into the collections, and you can see that there's a collection here called CH for character rain and I'll link that collection in and with that the character actually comes in but we really can't do anything with it yet other than we could move it around but we can't enter pose mode um, so the character is not useful yet so what we need to do here is get control of the armature which currently is just basically linked it's just showing up as an object so I'm gonna go to my object menu then I'm going to go to the Relations uh, menu item and click on Make Proxy. And then I'm going to browse down to this Rig Rain. I'll click on that and you can see that the selection color changed now so I now have control of this rig. I can enter Pose Mode and it shows up as CH Rain Proxy. It's a separate object in my Outliner. Now in case you have an issue where your rig won't show up um, or your rig colors won't show up. You can see I've got all these different colors and that's pretty standard. Um, if those don't show up, if they seem like they're underneath, for instance, your original object that you brought in, then you can come down here to your armature settings and you can go to your viewport display and make sure in front is checked and that will bring the bones out in front of everything else. Okay, so we've got our character in now. They're linked, so we're not actually modifying our original character file. Other people can use this in other scenes, and we're ready to animate with it. Um, so to start off with, you've already seen me use one. We're going to look at a couple of the handles. This is going to be a very basic crash course, so this is not going to be comprehensive by any stretch of the imagination, but this uh, ik-hand underscore parent dot l is what's called an ik handle. So ik stands for inverse kinematics and basically that means that I'm going to grab the end of what I want moving around and there's a chain that follows it back. In this case the chain has two links, the forearm and the upper arm and it terminates at the shoulder so I can move anything up to that shoulder with this ik handle. And that's pretty handy so what I can do here is I can already get rain into a more natural pose just by moving these objects around. So I can start here and by the way if I want to make this symmetrical for some reason I can uh, click on the object that I've moved on one side and hit control C and that copies my pose to the buffer and then if I come to the other side and hit control V sorry control shift V then that pastes the pose, the pose flipped flipped on X axis so this is now symmetrical which doesn't look very natural so we will just we'll kinda of change it up a little maybe rain is ready to draw in a duel or something on this side so she's got her got her hand ready all right, so that's an inverse kinematics um, handle, and the legs are set to work the same way, basically. They've got an IK um, handle at the bottom, and I've got this neat little control here that can tip the toes up. Got a control here that can kind of make the toes tap by themselves, and that's pretty cool. 
Um, so if I kind of, if I get a little lost in the woods here, maybe I've, you know, accidentally moved something when I didn't think I was moving something else and rain starts looking really weird and I'm like, oh man, that's going to take forever to fix and undo. Um, it's really easy to clear out your transformation. So I can just select all the bones with A and I can clear out any rotations with Alt R or if you're on a Mac it's Option R. I can clear out any movements with Alt G and any scaling operations I can clear out with Alt S. And that allows me to clear my transforms. Um, now an IK handle is good for a lot of different types of animation but you can also um, use forward kinematics. So I'm going in here to our cloud rig controls and everything is open right now. So there's our layers. All right, IK settings. And let's see if we can find this thing here. There's our face settings. IK, FK switch. FK, IK switch. Okay, here we are. So if I want to control the left arm with forward kinematics instead of inverse kinematics, now this this switch here isn't universal, but there will be usually be on any decent rig there will be some sort of switch for switching it around. So I'm going to flip this, and you can see that the controls on the arm change. So now instead of working from the root or from the tip backwards, I'm going to work from the root forward. So I'm going to say, okay, we want this to bend this way, this to come in here, and now we're going to bend the wrist a little bit. There we go. Okay, so forward kinematics can be a good way to accomplish things as well. You know, there there are certain poses that are going to be a lot easier in FK, certain poses that are going to be a lot easier using IK. So if you need one or the other, you just flip the controls around. Now this guy back here is called a pull target. And if your elbow isn't behaving quite the way you want, for instance, this is basically what it's going to aim for. You also have a pull target for your knees. So that can be a handy way to control, you know, a walk cycle or something like that. Um, so basically those pull targets, they show up for inverse kinematics since on forward kinematics you don't really need them. You're exercising a little more direct control. All right. Um, so those are a few basics of just kind of posing the rig here. If we want to actually animate here, let me clear out my transformations again. If we want to actually animate here, then it's just simply a matter of keyframing. So I'm going to start with this arm down here and we'll tap, I've just moved the one bone, so with that bone selected I'll tap I to keyframe its location and rotation and then we'll move forward to frame 40 and say okay by frame 40 she's going to be kind of busting a dance move here we'll keyframe the location and rotation there and I basically just animated that movement so if we want her to kind of salute in the meantime we can do the same thing to this other hand so let's bring that forward and I'm gonna have to move the pull target for the elbow there alright and she is saluting. And since I moved two bones, I need to keyframe both of those bones. So we'll keyframe the hand, location and rotation. We're going to keyframe the elbow pull target, location and rotation. But remember, we didn't keyframe a start position for that. So let's go back here. And let's clear the location for that and keyframe its original location. Okay, so now it will move as well. And we ought to give her kind of a nice snappy finish to that salute I think. Here's to you Mr. Firefighter. Location and rotation. Alright, so now 
There we go. And you know what? I don't like how quick I want her hand to stay up there for a little while, so I'm going to tap G and move this keyframe out. And this one I'm going to duplicate so that her hand just stays there for a minute. So there, there. Nice. Okay, so that's basically animated. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to pay a little bit of attention to is the eye followers. So if I want her eyes to move around, I've got this kind of set of binoculars out here. And that allows me to move her eyes around. There are a lot of facial controls here that come in really handy. Um, this chin one usually opens and closes the mouth. You know, you'll have a smile controller here. And actually, let's see. Oh, okay, that is not what I thought it was. Well, I don't see the smile controller, but quite often there's a controller that you can rotate here to turn a smile basically on or off. Just just a really simple smile to frown. Um, we'll see if... Yeah, I'm not 100% sure where it is, but anyway, these are basic, so I'm not going to sweat it. These are eyelids. I whoop, missed eyelids, brow controllers, eyebrow controllers. You can rotate them. You can get all kinds of fancy. You can flare nostrils, move the nose around if she itches or something like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, so those are the eye followers. Now you've also got a root bone down here and I want to put out a word of caution with the root bone. The root bone allows you to move the entire character. That is not how you should move the character. So um, the problem with moving the root bone is you can really animate yourself into trouble. Um, if you're going to move the entire character, it's generally best to just move the character in object mode. So you change to object mode, go back to frame one, and I'm going to tap I and location and rotation on this thing. And then we're going to move forward 70 frames, and we're going to move the entire thing. Let's hit Shift Z so we're not elevating it forward and keyframe the location and rotation there again. Okay, so. Now Rain is moving in space and time. She's not really moving her legs, but that's basically when I go back and I animate her feet moving in order to make it look like the, she's actually walking on the ground. So generally you don't move that root bone. It's kind of, a, kind of a for emergencies only in case you've animated something really complicated and all of a sudden you realize, oh, the entire thing needs to be in a different spot and for, there, for some reason you can't move it in object mode. So um, that root bone, it can be used, it's there to be used if you need it, but generally it's not good practice and you should avoid it if you can. So that's kind of a really basic crash course in how to animate a character with a fairly standard rig, and I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.